Okay, now that we've kind of given you a quick overview of frameworks in Android and Java at a high level, I'm gonna talk in more detail about some of the key characteristics of Android frameworks, of which I mentioned before, there's many of them. So there are three key defining characteristics of Android frameworks, or frameworks in general, of which Android is just one incarnation of. And let's go through them, and then we'll kind of connect that and anchor it with what happens in Android. So the first thing that a framework has, and you may have picked this up from that interaction diagram I showed you back, or the sequence diagram I showed you back before where the control goes back and forth. Frameworks exhibit what's called inversion of control, or IOC, by using callbacks, callbacks to hook methods, as we'll see. And uh, inversion of control is a very fundamental concept in modern software development. In fact, pretty much everything works that way these days. The alternative to inversion of control would be self-directed code, where you write the entire code yourself, and you, you, the application developer, decides how the control flows to the system. Very, very, very rare to do that for anything other than you know, simple, trivial little programs. So with an inversion of control model, the framework or frameworks control the execution thread, the main execution thread, and the framework decides when and how to run app code. So it's the framework that's making the decision about when the application code will run, as opposed to being self-directed. Inversion of control is sometimes humorously referred to as the Hollywood principle. You can read more about that here. The Hollywood principle says, don't call us, we'll call you. Right, so if, if you're a movie moogle, like uh, Cecil B. DeMilla or whatever, you don't call the studio, the studio calls you and says, hey, I've got this great role for you. Things probably don't work that way anymore, by the way. But uh, back in the day, that's the way it worked. That was the Hollywood principle. So how does that relate to Android? In Android, there's something called a looper, and we'll talk a little bit more about this stuff later. A looper is a component that's part of the Android infrastructure, and it runs continuously in the background, and it dispatches handlers. So that's the inversion of control. And then the, the handler will, in turn, turn around and dispatch a runnable. And the runnable could be code that you provide. So there's certain Android concurrency frameworks we'll talk about, such as the handlers, messages, and runnables framework, or the hammer framework. And that uses that inversion of control mechanism to dispatch runnables that you give it in the appropriate thread of control, typically the user interface thread. What's cool about this is that the runnable that's dispatched by the inversion of control mechanism supported by the Android framework doesn't know, doesn't care how or why it was called back. All, is it, all it knows is, it was my time to run, I'm in the right context, run, right? Because the run's the hook method that gets called back for a runnable. So that's the first thing, inversion of control using callbacks. The second thing control, the second concept is to integrate domain-specific structure and functionality, or rather a better word is integrated domain-specific structure and functionality. So rather than have sort of very general purpose, run-of-the-mill, domain-independent classes that are useful for everything, but not particularly useful for specific things, a framework gives you more domain-specific capabilities. In order to understand what that means, it's worth taking a step back and thinking more broadly about what's the, what's the broader, you know, what, what's not domain specific, what would be domain independent. So an example of a domain independent capability that you're undoubtedly familiar with would be something like a string class, right? Strings are useful for everything. There's pretty much, almost every program imaginable needs a string unless you're doing nothing but, you know, numerical computations that have no input and output that's text-based. So a string class is sort of infinitely reusable, but it's also domain independent. And it doesn't get you very far because it doesn't embody domain specific structure and functionality. So why is this important? Because we're trying to figure out how to write software that can be systematically re reused in the appropriate domain of interest. And so we want those things to be necessarily more narrow, more specialized, more customized than something that's meant to be useful everywhere. So what are some examples? Well, in the context of Android, the various frameworks that it supports focus on domains that are relevant for mobile apps and mobile services. So you're not going to find stuff in Android that would be useful for you know, 
a 10,000 node cluster, right? It's not the domain of mobile apps that Android is trying to satisfy. There are things out there, by the way, that do provide that kind of support, such as, say, Hadoop or Sparks, but Android isn't trying to solve that problem. So you wouldn't find frameworks for handling those kinds of things in Android. Instead, you're going to find things that are related to mobile apps and mobile services. And uh, why this is important is because this domain-specific capability can be reused in application specific ways. So when you write a mobile app, you can reuse the stuff in Android that's designed for mobile apps. So things that would be relevant would be things like you know, location services or telephony services or things that can notify stuff on the display in a very subtle but useful way when things happen in the background, like you get a new message and you have that little badge that shows up on your um, messages app or whatever. So those are things that are customized for that domain. And then the last characteristic of a framework that's important is they provide semi-complete portions of apps. And what that means, as we'll see, is that an awful lot of the capabilities provided out of the box, and you just have to plug things in. So that's kind of the met metaphor here. You plug things into this sort of this backplane, if you will. And the way this works, the mechanisms by which this occurs is through something called hook methods. And hook methods are implementations of patterns that you're probably familiar with, most specifically things like factory method pattern or the template method pattern, where you can customize these reusable framework classes to run app-specific logic at particular hook points or hotspots in the code. And you can take a look here for a couple of good articles that explain a bit more about what a hook method is. Very important concept in a framework. You can think of a hook method mostly as a virtual method that can be overridden or must be overridden by subclasses or implementations in order to provide app-specific behavior. And what we do here is the framework mediates the interactions among the common portions that are the, the abstract classes or the superclasses that provide a lot of that integrated domain-specific functionality. And then it allows the application developers to come along and customize and extend things to handle variant capability, things that are specific for that particular application. That's where the, the business logic comes in. But everything else can be reused. And another good sort of metaphor there is to think of like an iceberg where you've got, you know, a little bit at the surface that you can see and then everything else is down below. Well, in the concept of a framework, the framework is the big part you can't see. That's the part that's the bulk of the iceberg. And then you have the part just at the top that's the domain-specific or the application-specific part. So to give this a concrete example, a runnable is a, con a common abstract interface. right? We see that everywhere in Java and Android. And it has a run hook method that supports many concrete variants. In other words, whatever you're doing that's specific for your task at hand, you'll customize or instantiate runnable and fill in run to do that specific thing. OK, so that was also kind of a, a high level view of what are frameworks in general, and then kind of focusing just a tiny bit on what you find with, with uh, Android and uh, Android's frameworks.